But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in rivers and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking that your word would become real to us. That this story of Joshua and the nation of Israel would have meaning that would be relevant for today. God, that we are not just uh, sitting here talking about some neat Bible story, but that you in your presence are working truth in us. Lord, I believe that you are here standing before us today with a sword drawn neither for us nor against us, but in command of a mighty army. And Father, I ask you to make yourself real to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me just give you a little biblical history so that you know what is taking place in this particular passage of the Word. Israel as a nation has escaped from Egypt. As you know, there have been armies of Egypt that were swallowed up in the Red Sea as Israel was obedient and walked over on dry ground. But over a period of 40 years, unbelief had afflicted Israel as a nation so that they were merely wandering. The nation could not go forward and establish itself as a kingdom. It could not possess the lands that God had promised it because they were so caught up and confused in unbelief. I cannot impress upon you enough how much and how important it is that you as individuals believe God's Word. It is so important that a generation of soldiers and people over a period of 40 years died out in the desert so that the new convert, the, the people who were born into Israel as a nation that had never been circumcised were wandering in the desert without the, the emblem in their flesh of Jehovah God. And it was not until that dying out of unbelief could take place that God would allow them to stop long enough for the nation of Israel to be circumcised and to be obedient to the law of God. Now to you and I, as we talk about circumcision, we all wince a little bit because we're not foolish, we're adults, we know what that means. But the circumcision in the New Testament today is not in the flesh, it is in the heart. And when a church or a body of people wander for so long in unbelief, the newcomers, the people who come in and become a part, they are uncircumcised in their heart and do not understand what God is trying to do with His people. Now it's not uncommon and it's not unusual that you might not recognize who the Lord is standing in your path sometimes because Joshua was one who loved to dwell in the tent of meetings. When Moses would leave, when the Shekinah glory would come down and, and Moses would leave, Joshua would stay because Brother Charles, he loved being in the presence of Jehovah. He recognized, he knew the presence of Jehovah on a consistent basis because he was there often. And yet on this particular day, as he was going down the road leading Israel, the, the, the Lord himself walked into his very presence with a drawn sword, John, and stood in his path, and Joshua, the man of God, did not recognize him. Far too often we have people standing in our own congregations when the Spirit of God begins to move, they do not recognize Him. They do not have a heart for God because they have been in survival mode spiritually just trying to get by. Well, church, I believe God is tired of us operating in survival mode. I believe He wants us to take the battle to another level. We have done the battle in the mind. I've talked to you about doing battle in the mind for weeks. Now it is time to do battle as a church. It's time to stand up and recognize that the Lord Himself is a mighty warrior dressed for battle, ready to come forth and deliver His church into the kingdom of God. It's
it's not going to be an easy battle. It's not a battle that we can wink at or ignore or act like it isn't real. We must understand that the battle that we wage every day in the kingdom of God is a reality. How many of you would acknowledge to me that you struggle in your relationship to God? You struggle in your thinking. You struggle in your actions. You struggle in your faith. You do so because we are in a war. I was listening to the military channel yesterday just sitting there idling time away. It was kind of nice. Everybody was going. Blood was going to work. Mason wasn't there. Nobody was there. Just me. And I was, I was watching the ghosts of Batan on the military channel. I was listening to the reasoning behind why the president moved MacArthur from Bataan and got him off the island, leaving the general in charge of a poorly equipped army, both Filipino and American. I, I, I listened to why they moved him to Australia so that he would be safe and would not be captured by the enemy because they did not have the wherewithal to win that battle of Bataan. Many of us have read the stories of the Bataan Death March and how those men were marched hungry. They believed that they would be fed. They believed they would be clothed. They believed that they would be housed in a, in a POW camp that it would at least provide for the, the very basics of their need. It was not the case. You see, it's just like the devil to take you prisoner and let you starve to death. It's just like the devil, not only after he's beaten you down, to beat you up and steal and destroy everything that you have. You know, I, I was talking to the, the House of Hope the other day, and, and I was asking them if any of them recognized that John 10.10, 10, when it talked about the thief, was talking about Lucifer, the enemy of their soul. And every one of them said, I've had something destroyed. I've had some relationship messed up. I've had something that was done in my life. And I said, but it wasn't done. He wanted to kill you. How many of you recognize Lucifer, the devil, the enemy of your soul, wants you dead? He wants you dead because when you are dead, He believes that He can carry you into a, a, a horrible black eternity because He knows what His future is. He knows what God is going to do in judgment to Him. And for all of us who refuse to submit to the will of God, that's what eternity holds for us as well. I am thankful that the blood of Jesus is mine and that I know Him in salvation, that I know Him in the peace of my salvation. But let me tell you, there are greater ways to know the Lord. He is not just the Savior of your soul. Do you hear me? When He stood in that pathway in front of Joshua, Joshua was afraid. He wanted to know, whose side are you on? Why was that Joshua's question? Because Joshua was in a defensive stance already looking for the enemies of Israel to destroy them so that he could go in and possess the land. He had said 40 years earlier, we need to go in and possess the land. How many of you said in your own life, we need to go in and enjoy the blessing of God, yet for some reason you've not been able to get there. I'm here to tell you on that day when that angel of the Lord stood in that path with that sword drawn, Joshua was not sure who he was and was not sure what he's going to do. And sometimes in our lives, we're not sure who the Lord is or what He really wants to do. That sword of the Spirit is pointed directly at us and it seems like a threat. But understand that what you are going through now is not a destructive mechanism of God to hurt you. It is merely an educational plan to prepare you to do the work of the ministry and to overcome the enemy as he comes after you. Your barren time right now is not something that God needs for, for you. I'm telling you, the Bible tells us, and I've said it over and over in the last week.